Whatever happened to Medusa? Medusa's history of changes begins very, very early. She actually received her first nerf on the PTS already, being the removal of the attack speed slow from her too. Throughout the seasons, she has been in various places in the meta and has recently seen a lot of popularity again. We're gonna look at her development and specifically the last part of it as to what gave her that sudden upswing. Let's first go back almost two years to patch 2.4 in April 2015. In this patch, Medusa received her first post-PTS heavier nerf. Her Viper Shot was nerfed across the board with reduced damage, reduced attack speed and reduced scaling while increasing the mana cost, so quite a heavy hit there. Along with it, Lacerate received a nerf to its early base values early in the game, so a lot of her kit was nerfed down with no compensation buffs. Many people back then actually thought that the nerfs to Medusa were too heavy, but she kept on performing. Because of her ongoing dominant performance, she saw further nerfs in May 2015 in patch 2.6. Her acid spray was targeted this time, and while it, it was only the range that was targeted here, this nerf was actually very impactful. Beforehand, the main reason for her acid spray having lower base values than most other hunter abilities was pretty clear she had much longer range. She not only had a long projectile range to begin with, but also a cone behind that range, and the cone was relatively wide, so she could clear safer than pretty much any other hunter and deal much damage to their enemies because it was really hard to dodge the cone. This was all changed. The acid spray range was reduced from 55 to 40, and the cone angle was reduced from 90 to 70. Because of that, her clear was now very average within the Hunter role, actually having one of the lowest base values, but still being okay because of the cone effect, making it a little easier to poke with it. At the same time, her Petrify got a reduced movement speed slow. It was previously 50% if you were turned away from the target, now it ranged from 20% to 40% depending on the rank of the ability. After that, Medusa slowly dropped off in popularity. She wasn't completely erased from the field, but usually there were just better hunters to pick over her, and she was considered an average to a lower tier hunter. While seeing some ups and downs until the end of Season 3, by the end of Season 3 she had hit a relatively low point. As a matter of fact, she was considered underperforming by October 2016, so in patch 3.19, she actually got a buff to her Acid Spray and Lacerate, both targeting the mana cost of the ability, allowing her to clear while spending a little less mana. That didn't really matter all too much. Because of her generally not having the best place in the meta at that point, and not really having any other perks that she was gonna be picked for, even the reduced mana cost didn't push her much back into the meta where other hunters ruled supreme. That was until Season 4 came along. With Season 4, there were a lot of changes that affected Medusa directly or indirectly. The first one being direct buffs to her. The Lacerate damage was buffed, now going up to 280. So while we originally saw a nerf to the starting values, the earlier values of the ability, now it was the later values that got a buff in return, while the starting value remained at 80. Additionally, Lacerate now had 50% healing reduction at all ranks, instead of scaling up from 10% to 50%. Petrify, Medusa's ultimate, also received a buff. Targets that were turned away from her would now receive 75% of the total damage instead of the previous 50%, meaning that even if you turn away, you would still take a very decent chunk of damage. The ability that was not touched, which I criticized back then, was her 2. Her clear was still relatively weak for an ability-focused hunter, but the other buffs later showed that they made up for it. When Season 4 started, there were also quite a few other items that were buffed. First of all, Hasten Fatalis Sour buff. Now it had 10 flat penetration and 20% attack speed instead of 30, so the stats of this item were a lot more beneficial for most hunters than before and it allowed this item to be taken seriously and be picked up in a normal build. And there is Medusa's passive, Sidewinder, which allows her to not suffer movement penalty when side strafing and only half the movement penalty when back pedaling or moving backwards. If you consider that these passives work very well together, you have on one hand a passive that allows you to move around faster than others to the side and on the other hand, a passive that allows you to not have a basic attack movement penalty. 
then you will see why there is a benefit for Medusa in having Hasten Fatalis. In fact, Hasten Fatalis was so good on Medusa that she was one of the few hunters where you would still quite frequently see it in earlier seasons. But now with this item actually having additional value, it was an obvious buff to Medusa. The other buff was one that was not that obvious originally because another item got buffed as well. The item that got buffed was Death Toll. Now Death Toll is very very strong at the moment. It had a little less physical power, a little more health, but more healing per hit, 8 health per hit and 3 mana per hit. This kinda indicated at least at first that any hunter would go with Death Toll. Medusa doesn't do all too well with Death Toll. It's not a bad item for her, but as her 2 doesn't have the best clear on its own, there is an item that she does much better with, and that's Bluestone Pendant. Bluestone Pendant also saw a buff, which is 5 MP5, which really helps with mana cost, and if you're spending a lot of mana on abilities, as you can happen to do with Medusa, then this is a decent pickup. And what really is so important about Bluestone is the passive with the extra damage on the targets. But like I said, originally people thought that Death Toll would just outclass it and it wouldn't be picked up. It wasn't until some SPL games where Medusa got played with Bluestone Pendant that it gained popularity as a standard build for her and because of that pushed her back into the meta. The reasons behind this are quite simple. As the meta has shaped to a way where the ADC is left alone very very early into the game and you have to clear the wave before you go anywhere else in most situations, it is very helpful if you have a strong early clearing bonus and aggression bonus on the enemy as you do with Bluestone Pendant. So Bluestone Pendant facilitated the early aggression in lane that led to clearing the first wave earlier than the enemy team with Medusa, which then allows you to rotate out, steal the minions from the buff camps, the small minions, and with that get a level lead on your enemy right away or maybe even steal complete buffs. Then coming back into lane you have a lot of heavy lane aggression which also plays into that here and allows you to stay in your lane very early on your own without having much trouble. Obviously you're lacking the sustain but that's something you can still pick up relatively early and with many hunters coming back into the meta that are reliant on transcendence like Ullr it's not a problem for Medusa to build into transcendence herself and that obviously helps her as well because Medusa with transcendence has much better clear overall allowing her to one-shot the archers off a wave just with her too, which is very important when it comes to clearing aggression in general and rotations. But she's still not the strongest lane bully and the clearing advantage was just a part of the perks that she got. The other benefits were in the strong buff to the anti-heal, which while you wouldn't use it all too often because it kind of puts you out of position, can still be very beneficial in these situations and with many self-healers and healers being in the meta, that's a strong benefit. And in the buff to her ultimate. The buff to her ultimate made her even more of a teamfight monster than she already was beforehand. And these teamfight ultimates are hitting heavy at the moment. You'll frequently see Medusa being picked up in the SPL and pulling relatively good ultimates on the highest level of play that are literally game changing and game winning. Because of that Medusa basically made her way to the top of the meta once again after a long time spent around the lower or mid tier regions and I would not be surprised if we see a nerf to her specifically soon because she is performing very very well. With that, thank you guys for watching, I hope this was insightful, I hope this was interesting. If you haven't yet, feel free to click that subscribe button down below, maybe the bell next to it as well. Also I'll be streaming the patch notes tomorrow, feel free to stop by if you want to hear my opinion first hand. See you for the next one tomorrow, Duke Sloth, out!